My name is Noam, and this video will show me process when animating foliage in Spooky Ghost, which is a free, open source pixel animation tool. To demonstrate, I will be animating this huge tree I made, but this works just as well in lower resolutions. To start off, I'm going to break my tree into separate layers in Photoshop. You can use any art software for this. I'll do one layer for everything that isn't going to move, so the trunk, branches, roots, and in my case this little rock, and then four layers for the moving parts. One for the leaves, one for the plants around the roots, one for the little drippy bits that go in front of the trunk, and one for the little drippy bits that go behind the trunk. Once that's all done, I want to fill in some of the parts that are being obscured by other layers. For example, you can see how my branches here don't extend at all beneath the leaves layer. I want to extend them a bit to accommodate for the movement of the leaves later. To do this easily, I like to lower the opacity of the leaves layer. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to do the same thing for the roots behind the plants here. And then the same thing for the vines behind the leaves. Once everything is filled in, I'll draw an individual leaf in the static trunk layer. We'll use this later to make falling leaves. Now save each layer as a separate PNG image, and we can go over to Spooky Ghost. Before we start, I want to move this little sprite window down here. That way I can see both the animation window and the sprite window at the same time. Now, to load in all my layers, I'll head to Textures, click Load, and browse to where I saved my layers. After that, I'll head to the Sprites tab and add a new sprite. In the little sprite window on the bottom right, I'll choose the first texture and name the sprite. I'll repeat this process to create a sprite for each one of my textures. You can adjust your viewport and canvas size over here. Select each sprite and set its parent to the trunk sprite. This way you can move the trunk around and everything else moves with it. To move something, you can hold Alt and drag it around, or hover over the canvas and use the arrow keys to nudge it by a pixel. I'll change these index colors to help me differentiate between the sprites later. Okay, now we can start animating the leaves. Select the leaves sprite, and in the animations panel, select grid animation and click add. In the animations window on the top right, I'll choose the wave X function. Now if we hit play in the animations panel, we get this sort of animation. Currently it stops after one cycle, so we'll change loop mode to rewind. 
and to make it subtle, we can reduce the amplitude. You can control click the slider to type an exact value. That's much better. I will now set the anchor point lower, either with the slider or just by holding control and left clicking on the canvas. I'll reverse the animation by changing direction to backward. Now to make it slower, I'll change speed to 0.25. You have to be careful with this, because we want all parts of our animation to loop together. The time it takes an animation to loop is determined by its start, end, and speed variables. With speed at 0.25, my animation takes 4 seconds to loop. I'll make sure to match that with the rest of the animations. Once I'm happy with that, I'll select the animation and click Clone. Click the new animation and change its function to Wave Y. This will add vertical waves to help make things more interesting. To view both animations together, I'll click the root in the animations panel and play. Now that's obviously way too strong, so I'll reduce the amplitude. I have it at about half the amplitude of the wave X animation. I increased the frequency a bit, and now I'm happy with the leaf animations. I'll name them and move on to the vines. Select the vines sprite, and in the animations panel, add a new grid animation. I'll name it Vines Skew, set the function to Skew X, and the loop mode to Rewind again. Now if I stop and replay the root, you can see what the Skew function does. You can adjust the scale to make it more subtle. I'll set it to a negative number so that they move the other way. To make it go back and forth, you can change loop mode to ping pong. Or alternatively, I chose to change easing curve to sine, which is more bouncy. And I'll slow it down to 0.25 speed to match the other animations. I'll also add to the vines a wave x function. I'm gonna set it to 0.5 speed, which is twice as fast as the skew function. This combination makes for more interesting swinging, in my opinion. Make sure it's set to rewind and tweak amplitude, frequency, and anchor point to taste. I ended up slowing both the waves and skew animations on the vines to half the speed, so my animation takes 8 seconds to loop now. Once I'm happy with that, I can go over to the animations panel, clone both of these animations, and change their sprite to the other vine layer. Ok, next up we're gonna make the falling leaves. I'll create a new sprite, set it to the trunk texture, and head to the text rect window. This window allows you to select a part of your texture as the sprite, instead of the entire texture. Head back to the canvas and hold Alt left click to drag the leaf aside. I'll change the layer order a bit so that my falling leaves appear behind the vines and leaves. Now I'll create a group, drag the leaf sprite in there, and make some clones of it.
In the Animations panel, select Parallel Group and click Add. Name this group Leaf1. Then select Property and Add again. While Grid Animations deform sprites, Property Animations just change simple properties, such as size or position. We'll make sure the animation is targeting the correct sprite, Leaf1, and then set the property to Position Y. I'll change Speed to 0.25 again, and then scale to however many pixels we want our leaf to fall. Click play and you'll see the leaf falling. Now our leaf is falling, but I also want it to rotate. I'll add another property animation, set it to rotation, speed to 0.25, and scale decides how much it rotates. 360 would be one full revolution over 4 seconds. I'll add another property animation for position X so that my leaves fall diagonally, rather than straight down. And another one for opacity to make my leaves fade out. Speed at 0.25 again and change the scale to negative 1. To adjust the leaf's starting position, go to the position property animations and move it using the shift slider. Once you're happy with the falling animations, select the group and change its loop mode to rewind. To make more leaves, you can just clone the entire group, change its sprite to the next leaf, and click apply. Then adjust the leaf starting position using the shift slider. You can hide the tree's leaf sprite while doing this so that you can see where you're moving it. Now, this is nice, but both leaves are falling at the same time. To change this, I'll drag each parallel group into a new group, and set a delay on that new group. Much better. I'll repeat this process for all of the leaf sprites setting a different delay and shifting the X and Y positions every time, making sure the longest delay is no longer than 4 seconds. Once I'm happy with the falling leaves, I'll simply clone the leaves wave X animation we made earlier for the plants around the roots, and edit the variables to taste. Once I'm happy with the animation, I'll go to the render window in the bottom right corner, select where I want to save my file, and name it. I'm going to render mine at 10 frames per second. And even though it loops every 8 seconds, which is 80 frames, I'm going to render 120 frames and just discard the first 40 frames. I know that might sound weird, but it's to make up for the delay on some of the falling leaves. Watching. I hope this video is useful for someone, and I hope more people find out about this amazing hidden gem of a tool.